Hello, this is Dr. Bob Teal. This is part two of why natural vitamins are better than synthetic ones. And I'm the president of Doctors Research Inc. We distribute a brand of products called the Food Brand from Food Research International. Products that are nutritional supplements that are made of 100% food. They do not contain any USP nutrients or isolated uh, rocks or inorganic mineral salts like a lot of companies' products do. In the second part, what I'd like to do is talk more about vitamins. Vitamins exist in foods. They're called essential because if you don't consume them directly, your body cannot make them. And the first one that people tend to think of is vitamin A. Now, vitamin A exists in foods and exists in a couple different forms. There's uh, various forms of uh, uh, retinols in foods, yet when most people take a vitamin supplement that has some type of vitamin A, it only has one source of vitamin A. And that's pretty much unnatural. It's not the way vitamin A was intended to be ingested. Now, in addition to vitamin A itself, which tends to come mostly from animal sources, there are plant sources of vitamin A precursors such as beta carotene. Carrots, for example, are an excellent source of uh, vitamin A precursor beta carotene, as well as a food form of it, a form that does have antioxidant effects in the human body, and if, form that actually does work in the human body. Yet a lot of what people take in terms of vitamin A in the market is synthetic. Some of it comes from petroleum extracts and otherwise uh, it may come from uh, animal, uh, animal liver. And while the animal liver forms can be absorbed fairly well, especially if it's complete, some of the isolates there may be some questions or some concerns about them. But beyond that, there are other vitamins in the, out there. And let me give you a little brief history of vitamins. The reason that vitamins exist, or you know, they've always existed, but the reason that nutrition exists as a separate science is that over a century ago, people learned how to make rice white. You say, okay, so what? Well, when they started to do this, this caught on like wildfire because you could cook the rice faster than brown rice. So they removed the bran from the rice and they turned it white. And so it cooked faster and in climate, uh, humid climates, it would last longer. So in places like Southeast Asia, it became very popular, and so people started to eat white rice. Well, shortly after they started to do this, a problem developed. All of a sudden, a disease epidemic broke out called beriberi, and people were dying from this disease, and nobody knew what to do about it. So places like the United States sent over the best infectious disease doctors known to humankind at the time, which there aren't too many. And they tried to figure out, whoa, what, what's causing this? and nobody could figure it out. A Filipino farmer noticed that if he gave his chickens brown rice, they didn't have berry beer or they got over it. But because he was a Filipino farmer, eh, he wasn't paid too much attention to. Around the same time, a Japanese scientist was doing experiments with pigeons. And he kept going back and forth and he realized, aha, there's something in the brown rice portion of brown of rice that helps cure beriberi. He called these the anti-beriberi vital amino acids. And when he found there was more than one, this is where we got the term B vitamins. Contrary to what a lot of people think, they didn't start off discovering vitamin A and then vitamin B. They first came up with this concept for B vitamins. So what was the solution? To get rid of uh, white rice and go back to brown rice, right? No, people really like the white rice. So what they did, is they decided to spray white rice with synthetic forms of B vitamins. Synthetic forms? Yes. Why? Because it was cheaper and it was easy to do. And that seemed to prevent beriberi, so that's what happened. And because of that, we ended up getting, throughout the world, food fortification laws that said to go ahead and spray synthetics on refined rice, refined corn, uh, refined wheat. And lest I make it sound like all the problems were confined to Southeast Asia, because they started refining corn, in the southern portion of the United States, there was an epidemic of uh, pellagra because there was not enough uh, of amino acids in the corn. So it caused uh, niacinamide deficiencies, and so people were actually dying for decades in the United States because they were deficient in vitamin B3. So the solution here, of course, was to go to synthetic vitamins. So what's wrong with synthetic vitamins? Well, let's talk about what they are. For those of you who, uh, who have our brochure, uh, or those who, even those who don't, 
Uh, let me ex explain that uh, vitamin B1, thiamine, for example, is generally in foods. It comes from like nutritional yeast, rice bran, and that's what's in food supplements such as uh, this one here for the B vitamins. Okay, but not the synthetic forms. The synthetic forms basically are coal tar derivatives processed with hydrochloric acid. You say, well, how can you look at a label and tell? You can't look at a label and say, oh, it says it's natural, so that means it's 100% food. No, the best way to know would be to look at the label to see, does the label actually say it's 100% food? If it says it's 100% food and there are no synthetic forms of the B vitamins listed on the label, then you got a pretty good idea that what your patients are taking is food. However, your typical patient will come in with some kind of a B50 formula or something in terms of B vitamins. And you'll look at the label and you'll see things like thiamine mononitrate or thiamine hydrochloride, neither of which are in foods. The forms found in foods are thiamine pyrophosphate, uh, thiamine monophosphate, just plain thiamine. That's what's found in foods, but that's not typically what's found in synthetic vitamins. If that's what uh, most of your patients are going to be taking. and You don't want them to do that. One of the reasons that I believe some people develop peripheral neuropathy is because their bodies don't always handle synthetic B vitamins very well. Now that's not everybody with peripheral neuropathy and I'm not saying that food vitamins are necessarily a treatment for peripheral neuropathy. But I am saying that I have seen in my clinic that if I take people off of synthetic B vitamins sometimes they do better in their, with their peripheral neuropathy. While most doctors are under the impression that, at least mainstream doctors, that a vitamin is a vitamin because it's the same chemical. As I mentioned before, it's not the same chemical in terms of, as I said just a moment ago, vitamin B1 or thiamine. In terms of uh, other ones, for example, uh, riboflavin. Riboflavin is essentially the same uh, chemical form is found in food as in non-foods, but in foods it comes from nutritional yeast or rice bran, yet in synthetic supplements it's synthetically produced with 2-N-acetic uh, acid. What about uh, vitamin B3, niacin? Well, that tends to be made with coal tar derivatives or plus something called 3-cyanopyridin, uh, yet again in foods, food supplements, like let's say this one, it exists as nutritional yeast and rice bran. So we've got chemical differences, we've got structural differences, and we've got composition differences. I don't believe God intended human beings to eat a bunch of isolated substances. That's why vitamins are in foods, because there's factors in foods that help the absorption and utilization of vitamins. Let's continue on. Vitamin B5, panathenate. If you see such panathetic acid listed on a label, you know that you've got a problem there. Why? Because panathetic acid is not what's found in food. Panathenate is. And uh, uh, panathenic acid is made by condensing isobutyl dihyde with formaldehyde. Really a lot of fun. Let's talk about one more, vitamin B6. In food supplements made out of nutritional yeast and rice bran, yet the synthetic forms such as pyridoxine HCL are made with uh, petroleum esters, hydrochloric acid, with formaldehyde. These are not foods. These are not what I believe your patients should take. In this, in this polluted world, why would we bother, want to take more petroleum derivatives and chemical extracts for our body? The human body was designed to eat food and get their vitamins from foods, and in case your foods are deficient, supplements that contain only foods, this one being an example. For more technical information, I would recommend that uh, you go to our website, which is www.doctorsresearch.com. That's www.doctorsresearch.com because there's more technical information on B vitamins, vitamin A, other vitamins and minerals, and why food vitamins are better for you and for your patients.